So hello, good morning to all the participants. Uh, Mr. Sir is here, sir. Uh, with your permission, shall we start? Yeah. Good morning to all of you. Sorry, and, sir. Uh, good morning. Yes, sir. Morning, sir. As uh, let me ask one thing uh, to you. Uh, first, uh, within two to three minutes, you just uh, give one deep idea about the participant. What is their background? Where from there? Uh, just in two minutes. Okay. So, uh, sir, we'll do one thing. Uh, first five minutes uh, will allow uh, the speaker means unmute so that participants can uh, join and uh, talk to you directly. Okay, no, because one by one, if every participant will talk, uh, then it will take time. So you tell, as a coordinator, you tell. Uh, what is the background? Most of the participants are from social science background, uh, yeah. and I think seventy percent participants are commerce and management background. They are doing PhD or MPhil in commerce and management, and uh, a few are from technical background, BTech and MTech. They have completed, and again, few are from uh, history and political science background, sir. Yeah. But most of the participants from commerce, management, social science, uh, scholars, faculties. Yeah, all are almost uh, PhD scholars and or uh, teachers. Almost, almost, sir, more than uh, means uh, more than seventy-five percent are PhD scholars or MPhil scholars. Okay, okay. Are they teachers? They are teachers. Yes, sir. The no uh, PG students are available. Uh, no, sir. No PG students are available. Okay, so because accordingly I have to uh, give my lecture, so that's why I asked. Yes, sir. sir. No PG students are there. All are scholars and faculty members. Okay, so shall I start now? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, just may tell you, sir, one minute. Okay. Uh, hello, participants. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the third day of the online certificate program on advanced research methodology and data analysis. Uh, today, uh, the topic is. Uh, Instruments and data analysis tools. Again, for the second day, we have with us Dr. Uma Shankar Mishra uh, from uh, Rajasthan Central University. Yesterday, we had a beautiful session, uh, deliberation by uh, Dr. Mishra. And today, we want to continue with Sir. Um, I would like to request Sir. Sir, welcome to uh, the third day of our online certificate program. Um, uh, now, uh, we can start, Sir. Please, Sir, over to you. Okay, okay. Thank you. So good morning to all participants. Uh, just I came to know most of the participants are uh, either doing PhD or MPhil or they are in uh, teaching profession. Sure. So that, that's why uh, uh, it will be easier for me uh, to deliberate, uh, deliver some lecture session. Okay. And uh, yes, uh, Somasri Mahanti uh, is a PhD student. Yes, okay. yes sir. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Sure. So. <clears throat> So taking care of all the participants' background, I will deliver, don't worry. So because uh, always uh, in my teaching career, always I deliver uh, from the scratch. So because most of the people, they might be knowing, knowing some of the aspects of different analysis or all of the things. That doesn't mean I will not cover all these things uh, for other participants. So I have to start from scratch. So uh, it's good that most of the participants, if you know that uh, uh, trick, uh, if you know the something about those analysis, so that's sorry to disturb you. Yeah. Your video is not visible. Uh, okay, okay, just a minute. Now visible, uh, 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Thank you. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so today, uh, uh, our session. Uh, is all about your instrument design and data analysis and in fact uh, it's very difficult uh, to tell about data analysis uh, online now without showing any slide or without showing any software uh, because within two hours if i will show the slides and software so definitely uh, uh, we may not cover most of the important aspects so that's a only just like yesterday we will uh, uh, adopt the same lecture method uh, of my own because I never use any slide or whatever. But it would have been better uh, if I would have shown the softwares like SPSS or uh, any other uh, normal software, standard software, MS Excel or whatever, or almost like this. 
So whatever may be the software package, because nowadays day by day, every day, a new statistical software is being launched. So that say, don't worry about the new software because people are running after the new software like your uh, so many your uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence software like your uh, R analytics, Python, or whatever. But uh, those softwares are for specific research purpose, for specific uh, modeling purpose. So don't worry about those software if you don't know the uh, ABCD of those software. So there is nothing to be worried about this. So what little bit of idea should be there? The first uh, fundamental clarity about the software will come uh, if, you, if you are thorough about uh, the MS Excel. Because if you are acquainted, if you know everything about MS Excel in macro programming and uh, uh, the solver, uh, Adam solver in MS Excel, then uh, maximum things you can understand if you access other software also. Because all other statistical softwares are uh, almost extracted from the concept of MS Excel. So that's why here uh, 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 I am uh, uh, I generally use the software for data analysis of my research work, uh, SPSS software packages. And uh, SPSS uh, added with Amos uh, software because Amos software is uh, for structural equation model. And uh, now uh, uh, different versions of Amos have come, and uh, uh, the PLS software have also come of Amos. So that's it. Whatever may be the changing nature of version or dynamism of uh, software, that uh, uh, that should not be uh, a matter of uh, discussion. But the fundamental clarity. What, how to use that is not important, but why to use the technique that is more important. Because if you know the logic behind this uh, uh, application of the techniques or logic behind the application of any data analysis tools, that is important. Because the rest of the things, uh, even a DTP operator nowadays, those who are dealing with your typing or PhD thesis or FL thesis, even they are more acquainted in operating the software. So, how to operate the software, that is not important, but why? You have to apply this technique and where you have to apply this technique for what purpose, for what outcome, and how to interpret the outcome of the uh, statistical analysis that is more important for the researcher. And uh, today, first of all, uh, as uh, assigned to me, the topic is instrument design and data analysis. In social science, particularly the instrument uh, uh, means your survey instrument, and that survey instrument basically we are dealing with the questionnaire survey. So many other instruments you might be using, like your psycho galvanometer or uh, CCTV camera, or any other technical instrument you might be using to collect the data through observational method. But in survey method, in experimental method also, you may use some instruments, uh, some technical instrument. But generally, in a survey with, uh, method of your data collection, you are using the, uh, the questionnaire as the instrument. Okay. Unlike your suppose in case of pure science or natural science, they are using some instruments in different la laboratory setup. Like suppose in chemistry laboratory, they are using instrument like your uh, bullet, pipette, bullets and bonner, all these things. In physics laboratory, they are using also some uh, circuit diagram, circuit uh, electrical circuit, or uh, simple pendulum screw. Because all these things, you if you have the background of science in twelve, you might be knowing the these are the instrument you are using yeah, in physics laboratory or chemistry laboratory. But uh, unlike your natural science, here instrument means our only one instrument in survey based method of data collection that is a questionnaire. And uh, construction of questionnaire is more important. And uh, choosing of items in the questionnaire and the content of the questionnaire, finalization of content of the questionnaire, that is also very important because if the instrument is erratic, then definitely data will be erratic. Okay. Am I able? Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. But in chatting message, somebody has uh, yes. Voice is not clear. But yeah. uh, audible, sir. Clearly audible, sir. Okay. If for maximum I am audible, then definitely that is a specific problem. Okay. Yes, sir. Only okay. anyway. So, so that's a whenever uh, you are thinking about uh, the instrument design, definitely few things uh, you have to consider, that means uh, uh, what are the content of the questionnaire and uh, what are the uh, sequence of the questions of the questionnaire and uh, what should be the format of asking question, okay, that means what type of scale you will be using in designing the questionnaire or instrument, 
and the most important thing whether the question uh, questionnaire or the instrument uh, is valid or reliable or not that means uh, before uh, before uh, uh, implementing or uh, before administering in your uh, the questionnaire or the before administering the uh, survey instrument for data collection purpose uh, you must make sure that uh, uh, your uh, reliability and validity of the survey instrument must be accurate okay that is the reliability and validity should be significant so that we can go ahead for data collection but while you are testing the reliability and validity definitely uh, some data you have to collect to test the reliability and validity but those data should not be used for final analysis because those data are for testing purpose those data you are collecting in pilot survey for only confirming whether your questionnaire is uh, perfect or not whether your uh, survey instrument is uh, reliable and valid or not okay like in cricket match you might doing uh, it might be knowing uh, in our uh, local areas or local colonies whenever we are playing cricket initially the batsman is asking for bowler for a trial ball but the trial ball the score the batsman will do for the trial ball that is not considered for final score in the original score so that's in this questionnaire testing while you are pre testing the questionnaire the data whatever you will collect for this pre testing purpose that is not the part of the final analysis that is only for confirmation about the validity and reliability of the questionnaire okay now thing is that uh, what is the meaning of this reliability and validity reliability and validity probably i have discussed yesterday reliability is the consistency nature of your data and validity is nothing but your how precise your data that means how far your data is accurate or accuracy level okay so sometimes what happens if you ask some wrong question the answer may be right to that question but the answer is not fitting to achieve the objective of your research work so that means that uh, question is invalid question for your research purpose so that's a, that question item should be removed from your uh, final questionnaire to improve the validity of your research work sometimes what happen say if you will ask some irrelevant question that question uh, it will go to the question that question looks like good that question uh, sounds good but that question may be may not have some relevance or may not have some uh, significant relation to achieve your objective so what for we will ask that question on a single uh, wastage of time and uh, out of these questions uh, respondents may be irritated and respondents may uh, laugh at the uh, researcher that uh, what for this researcher is doing research because his objective is something and is asking some other thing so that say this type of thing should be considered while you are designing the questionnaire whether the questionnaire is really relevant for your purpose of the study or not and again sometimes while you are uh, constructing the questionnaire the sequence matters a lot that means uh, first what type of question you have to ask then in middle portion what type of question you have to ask in the last portion what type of question you have to ask okay so that's a here uh, uh, in that case uh, in that case uh, the questionnaire construction or the sequence of the questions or the branching question suppose some question may have some relationship with another question it has some branches to other questions so all these type of things should be considered while you are designing your questionnaire okay generally what we are doing generally when you are constructing the questionnaire initially you are asking the demography related questions that is like your uh, age income occupation location then your family status lifestyle status everything okay but in my point of view this question should be asked in last question if you are not uh, uh, suppose uh, in your research suppose the objective is not directly related to your demographics only to, uh, for certain descriptive analysis purpose you have asked for this demographic questions So definitely, since that is not the master objective of the research, work, so uh, let them uh, uh, give the response to this demographic-related item in the last. Why I am saying you have to ask in the last? Because if they have to fill up the response to the uh, questions you have asked related to demographics, it may take a minimum 10 to 15 minutes time. And if the respondent have no time, suppose the respondent has given only 30 minutes time or 20 minutes time to fill up the questionnaire. and out of 20 minutes if the respondents will fill up the demographic uh, related question of 15 minutes so rest 5 minutes only left for the responding other important questions so that say here you have to ask some relevant question first 
then some of the branching questions, some of the, I'm not saying demographic questions are not relevant, but that is less, less relevant in comparison to other master courses. So that say, in that, in that uh, way, you have to maintain uh, your uh, uh, sequence of the questions so that uh, maximum to maximum how the data will be collected uh, in less time and that to the valid data you have to collect. That is the matter, matter of uh, responsibility of the researcher. Okay. And some questions uh, may, cannot be answered. Suppose, uh, that means that respondent cannot answer that question because that respondent is not the appropriate or suitable respondent to respond to your questions. So if that uh, respondent is not suitable respondent to ask uh, to answer this question or to respond this question, then definitely why you are asking that question to that respondent. So better if you divide the respondents in group wise, then uh, accordingly you design different types of questionnaire, having some common question and different types of questionnaire, and then you understand the questionnaire on this. Okay. And again, some questions are quite confusing. That means uh, lots of ambiguity will be there. And uh, some of the questions are double barrel in nature. That means uh, in one sentence, you are asking two to three questions okay, in one sentence. That means uh, if you are asking two to three questions in one sentence, then uh, respondent will respond to uh, which question of that sentence. Okay, Because you have, uh, suppose uh, it is a closed ended question and it has having some uh, options. Uh, it is having some options like four to three options, just like your MCQ, multiple choice. And uh, if he has to fill up, if he has to put a tick mark in one option, then that uh, one, uh, that response is uh, the answer of which sub question of that sentence. Okay, so that is a matter of, uh, that is a matter of confusion uh, uh, for respondents. So that's why, uh, if possible, as far as possible, we'll try to avoid the double valid questions. And uh, while you are designing some questionnaire, the format of maximum question questionnaire items uh, are in the are in accordance with some measurement scales. Okay, measurement scale because uh, this is this instrument, the survey instrument or the questionnaire is nothing but a measurement instrument. That means why it is called a measurement instrument because you are measuring the response related to your study variables. Because already yesterday I told that if any concept cannot be measured, that is not called as a variable. That is the only concept. Okay. So that's a any concept out of the literature review, we have drawn so many concepts related to your theme of your research work. And all the theme of the research work, conceptual theme, should be transferred to the variables if it is verified that it can be measured. So that say here, if nothing can be measured, if certain item cannot be measured, then there is no chance to include in that question. Some concept may be verified without uh, actual measurement through grounded theory approach through quality research approach. That means just by open discussion, just by uh, focus group interview, you can have some idea only. You cannot accurately measure in a quantitative manner. Okay. So that say if you are doing empirical study. That means uh, your uh, empirical study in the uh, with respect to quantitative research work. So definitely all the variables should be measurable. Okay. So that say here, what is measurement scale? Uh, in research methodology uh, subject, uh, you might have heard this term frequently. That measurement scale and testing. Okay. Not only you have to understand the measurement scale components, but how to test the measurement scale. Test means how to test the validity and reliability of measurement scale so that uh, during the evaluation of measurement scale uh, you can finalize yes my measurement scale is perfect okay generally measurement uh, means measurement scale consists of two words one is your measurement another is scale so measurement scale is nothing but the measurement means you have to assign some number for the attribute of one variable <coughs> for the attribute of an object not variable for the attribute of an object Suppose, for example, uh, you have to measure the length of the length of a bench. So here, bench is the object, and length is the attribute of the object. Okay. So that say you are not measuring, you are not assigning the number for bench. You are assigning the number for length of the bench. So similarly, whenever you are asking some question to questionnaire for the to the respondents, you are asking some question related to the attributes of your study variables. You are not uh, asking give some score for the entire study variables, attributes of some study variables. Okay. So each attribute of one master study variable is called as item. 
generally in the research, uh, uh, this term we are using that is called as an item, research item. So the, each each of the research items are called as your one of the attribute of one master variable. Master variable means of one construct or of one dimension or in, uh, indirectly you can tell it is called as a latent variable. So what is latent variable? Latent variables are not visible. Directly nobody can measure the or the, nobody can assign the uh, actual score for latent variable. We can realize, we can internalize the presence of that variable, but directly measurement is not possible. Because in order to measure that uh, variable, we have to add so many similar type of attributes under that. Suppose for example, bench. Bench has different attributes. Bench has not only one dimension length. Bench has another dimension breadth. Bench has another dimension height. Bench has another dimension look. Bench has another dimension the color. So these are the attributes of the object that is bench. So if you collect the scores of each and every attributes of the object that is bench, then you can completely define the bench will look like this according to the perception of your respondents. So that says the entire variable can be uh, internalized. The entire latent variable can be thoroughly linked with other variables for further analysis. If all the attributes of all the attributes that to valid attributes, because length, breadth, and height of the bench, these are all the valid attributes. Suppose uh, I can tell. Suppose uh, uh, what is the uh, volume of the bench? Although volume of the bench is just one uh, type of uh, a possible thing to be asked, because volume of the bench can be measured, no doubt. But uh, that is not valid question to be asked because what for you what what for you are asked volume for bench because we are going to define bench as a whole to internalize to visualize that object in our mindset. So volume of the bench we are not uh, doing any scientific research any hardcore scientist I am not a natural scientist that I have to ask the volume for bench then ingredients of the bench then chemical composition of the bench that is not the requirement of my analysis. Because I have asked for the attributes of uh, normal attributes, generalized attributes like your length, height, or breadth, only to visualize the bench, how the bench will look like. If that is my purpose, if that will solve my research problem, what for I will ask the chemical composition of the wood used in the bench. So that say here, in that case, whenever uh, you are, you are uh, internalizing, whenever you are defining or you are conceptualizing one uh, variable, Latin variable, or latent variable can otherwise be called as a construct. Already I have discussed yesterday, a construct is nothing but a set of interrelated concepts and all the interrelated concepts, all the concepts are coming under construct should be, uh, should have some ability to be measured. Okay. So that's a, whenever you are assigning some major numbers, maybe one, two, three, or any decimal numbers or fraction number, any number. Okay. Whenever you are assigning any number to the attributes of an object, that process will be called as a measurement. Okay. Now another term uh, uh, we are using that is scale. So what is that scale? You might have, uh, uh, we are all, almost all of us are acquainted of uh, using the uh, scale uh, during our uh, school days or right now also we are using the scale, okay, measurement scale. That scale, uh, if it is a smaller size scale, uh, having uh, 15 centimeter length or equivalent uh, length is 6 inch, then that is uh, scale, that is the standardized scale uh, generally everybody is using. Okay. And in that case, for me the length of the scale is 15 centimeter, for you also length is 15 centimeter. All over the world, uh, if they are using the same type of instrument, their uh, length is also 15 centimeter. Okay. And for me, 15, 15 centimeter is equivalent to 6 inch, for you also it is equivalent to 6 inch, for others also it is equivalent to 6 inch. For me, one kilometer is 1,000 meter. For you also, one kilometer is 1,000 meter because that is quite standardized. So scale is a continuum of number which is quite standardized based upon predefined rules or predefined norms. Because we have some norms, we have some rules, we have some conversion formula and that is highly standardized and that standardized formula you are implementing in an instrument having some number continuum 1, 2, 3, 4, or 15. So if that continuum will carry some numbers in a sequential order and that sequential order is on the basis of some predefined standardized rule, then that instrument will be called as a scale. Okay. 
So that's a if you are using that scale, that scale is uh, instrument. If you are using that scale, then assignment of number for the attributes of object will be easier for you. That means if you are using scale to measure the attribute of the object, that will be easier for you. Because suppose, for example, there will be no scale like 15 centimeter scale or 30 centimeter scale. Just by using one thread or by using one stick, you have to measure. But uh, that will be giving very erratic data for different contexts in different uh, respondents. Okay, because it has no numbers, it has no continuum, it has no standardized norm. Okay, just like uh, we are using uh, the just like uh, we are using the length of certain object by using our uh, hand or using our palm. So all these things for me, hand is a little bit uh, longer. For you, the hand is a little bit shorter. So it is not the standardized. So that's a whenever you are using some instrument for assigning some number for the attributes of object, that is for measurement purpose, then definitely that measurement scale has to be standardized. Okay. So in the same uh, logic, <coughs> while you are using uh, survey instrument, because you are saying uh, your questionnaire is called as a survey instrument, so that survey instrument must be standardized. It must. A standardized means the outcome must be valid outcome and the reliability score must be acceptable reliability score and the uh, outcome of the uh, questionnaire must be highly generalizable. Okay. That means if you are using the questionnaire, what type of response you are getting in this time, almost same type of, almost same, I am not saying exactly 100% same because it is a social science research instrument, it is not actual pure natural science instrument. So that's a but maximum data should be common. Maximum data should show the internal consistency level or reliability level in pilot survey. So right now, today you have collected data and tomorrow you will collect the data by using the same questionnaire. We should not expect there is a huge difference among the response. Okay. Little bit variations are allowed because uh, most of the data in survey based data, most of the data are highly skewed data and uh, highly dispersed data, no doubt. But that doesn't mean the level of dispersion or the level of skewness will be more than our acceptance zone. Okay. So if the dispersion level or skewness level or kurtosis level will be more than our accepted zone, that data will, should be deleted. That data should not be considered for final interpretation of your data analysis, for final interpretation of solving your research problem. So that <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So the data, suppose out of uh, total collected data, suppose uh, from 100 respondents you have collected uh, 100 set of data. Out of 100 set of data, suppose 20 sets of data you found uh, that is uh, totally different from rest 80 sets of data. So that 20 sets of data are called as outliers. That means uh, those outliers are not matching with the rest of the data and the rest of the data are almost 80% of the data. So 80% of people are saying one thing, only 20% of people are saying different things. So in order to generalize the outcome, we should not include this 20%. Suppose for example, uh, uh, in regular uh, MBA program, in one institute of MBA institute, regular MBA program, if a dean or principal will ask the class teacher when uh, he will teach the past class of the new session, new academic session, if the dean will ask the teacher that I uh, have taken the past class of new academic session, tell me uh, what will be the around uh, average age of this class, average age of the students. So definitely he will tell average is around uh, 21 years. Because uh, after graduation, they have taken admission the regular MBA program, so around 21 years. That is his guesswork. That is, uh, he has not uh, really collected data from admission register. That is, that is just his hypothesis. He is just uh, looking at the face, looking at the looks of the students. He is guessing that uh, probably it is in between 22, 22, 23 years or 21 years like this. Okay. But whether his hypothesis is right or wrong, uh, in order to verify, suppose uh, suddenly the dean will enter the class and uh, in first instance, dean will see two such students and he will ask, how old are you? And they will tell, uh, we are 40 years old. 
So 40 years old, but uh, he will correlate. I had asked the teacher that average age he had told 21 years, but here these two people are saying 40 years old. So almost double. That means it is totally different, highly dispersed data from the hypothetical concept. But that doesn't mean all other students are having age of 40 years. Maximum people are having age in between 20 to 23 years. Only five to six students are having age 40 years. So in order to conclude, in order to generalize the thing, we should not consider the age of these 40 years. That means these five to six students should be deleted from your final analysis because their age is not coming with your accepted level. So that says those data should be called as your outlier data and those outlier data should be removed. Okay. And uh, in graphical analysis, uh, it can be easily captured who, uh, what type of data are outliers. So those uh, outliers can be removed. And uh, in uh, descriptive analysis, we might be knowing one type of graph uh, that is your uh, box plot. Okay, so in box plot, uh, maximum range uh, it will automatically give that is your accepted range, and it considers the median value of the total data as the middlemost value, and all other data will be compared to the median, and some of the data are totally out of the box, and those total data who are out of the box, if there is an option in spaces, it will click that option that automatically outlier you remove, then finally that software will automatically remove the out outliers and will give the new database deleting all these outliers so that the consistency level or reliability level of the final analysis will be improved. Okay, so that says that is uh, just uh, one uh, traditional process of uh, because in uh, data filtration work is mostly traditional uh, process because if statistically and technically if you filter the data that will give uh, less uh, accuracy than traditional process of data filtration. In the beginning phase, first you apply the traditional process of data filtration by applying your own intuition. Then for final policing purpose, you can apply some statistical techniques or you take the help of software for policing the final level of validity and reliability. But for enter raw data, whatever you have collected from the field, for enter raw data without editing, without coding, without any the uh, normality test it directly will implement some statistical tool for validity test or reliability test. Obviously, will not may not achieve the uh, required level of validity or reliability. What for you are searching? Okay. So that's why uh, yesterday I have told uh, if you are uh, by applying your determination of sample size formula, if you have uh, fixed your sample size should be in between 180 to 200, then minimum we have to collect 400 data or 500 data so that. 50% data in the due course may be filtered out as the outliers. Possibility are there. So that's say here, finally, after filtering out all the outliers of 50% of total survey data, remaining data are uh, highly reliable data and uh, uh, valid data to be considered for final analysis. And uh, whenever you will create one model out of that, the model will be the best fitted model and model will be the best representation of the reality. Uh, if you will uh, uh, discard the outliers because outliers are only for short term purpose outliers are only because of bias outliers uh, uh, are coming because of some specific problem for specific respondent not it is not highly generalized but our objective to get the outcome or to get the uh, contribution of our research work we should be generalized that is not specialized to some particular group of person or that is should not be specific to particular area it should be generalized okay if your research outcome cannot be generalized, then how theory can be built? If theory cannot be built upon our recommendation, uh, upon our model, uh, recommended model, then definitely there will be no meaning of doing research, if there will be no social impact, if there will be no uh, perfect representation of reality in generalized manner. Okay. Special treatment can be given for specific application uh, or uh, exceptional cases should be treated separately but not in normal fundamental research work or generalized research work. Okay. <coughs> Suppose case study, case-based research are some specific research that is specific to that company. In that case, you may not generalize. Suppose some uh, research outcome is only some particular industry specific or particular company specific, uh, not in generalized theory basis. So in that case, special treatment may be there. You may, you may not uh, discard the outliers because all the data are having some equal OTs, some important uh, inputs in different aspects. 
but whenever you are doing one uh, research on a generalized topic and for the uh, applicable for generalized society then definitely this type of uh, filtration work is necessary okay so that's say uh, here uh, uh, i discussed about the fundamental concepts of measurement scale now there are different levels primary levels of measurement scale all of you might be knowing there are four basic primary levels of measurement scale one is your nominal scale then ordinal scale then interval scale and ratio scale okay so any research item any research item means one item item means i have already told that is the attribute of an object and attribute of an object here in a survey based research means object is nothing but a study variable so what is the attribute of that object that attribute is nothing but the item of that variable okay so that say whether the item you have asked in survey estimate are measurable in nominal scale form or ordinal scale form or interval scale form or ratio scale form if you have asked the question in the format of nominal scale or ordinal scale form then that type of items are called as your non metric items non metric scale okay non metric scale items okay but if you have asked the items in the format of interval scale or ratio scale form then those type of items are called as metric scale items okay so non metric scale means it has been measured either by nominal scale or by ordinal scale metric scale of items means it is measured either by ordinal uh, sorry interval scale or ratio scale okay so in space of there uh, while you are very uh, specifying the variables before data entry in the last column of variable specification screen you might have uh, gone through uh, measurement scale and if you will click that measurement scale menu there will be three option will be there one is a nominal scale and the ordinal scale another option is only scale that only scale includes both interval scale as well as ratio scale okay now what is this uh, nominal scale ordinal scale interval scale and ratio scale nominal scale is nothing but uh, if certain item is being measured in terms of categorical variable categorical variable means only to categorize the object that attribute we are asking only for categorizing the object suppose uh, my motto is to categorize the respondents according to gender so gender is my study variable okay and uh, that study variable is having two possible outcome one is male another is female so i have to put a tick mark either in male or in female so if i have give the option the code number one for male and zero for female and uh, technically numerically we know one is greater than zero that doesn't mean male are greater than female so that type of numerical interpretation cannot be embedded in the final uh, data collected if it is measured by nominal scale because this one and zero we have uh, given the coding only for categorizing the gender okay whether it is male gender category and this is female gender category okay so most of the demographic uh, questions like your income group location age group occupation then education profile these are all uh, 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 items which you are asking on the in the form of nominal scale because these are only categorization of the respondents in uh, with respect to different variables may be income variable may be location variable whatever okay but in addition to demographic certain questions you might have asked related to your research thing having some multiple choice options and there multiple choice options are also uh, in the form of nominal scale okay so suppose es yes, no category suppose uh, uh, dichotomous questions if uh, it has having two type of option es yes, no like dislike interested not interested okay so th this type of uh, item if you are asking that is also nominal scale but ordinal scale <coughs> in ordinal scale uh, the response uh, are having some particular sequence that means it has some particular order okay suppose uh, you have asked some research item to rank the following five brands or 10 brands of the product suppose you have given the option of 10 brands of product and you are asking to the respondents give your ranking score for each of the 10 i have 10 brands and rank one is the best and rank 10 is the least preferred uh, uh, brand so based upon your perception based upon your preference level you have to rank and whenever you are assigning some rank score 1 to 10 Then definitely it has some order. Rank one means it is the best one. 
rank 2 means the second best, rank 3 means the third best and so on. So that's a here not only you are categorizing, you are not only categorizing the brand but you are also giving some score, having some preference order. But in case of male female type, there is no such order. Whether male is better than female or female is better than male, that is not applicable in gender. But here, in order to choose the brand preference by assigning some rank score, it has some order or sequence. So since it is having some particular order or some sequence, that's why this type of measurement scale is called ordinal scale. Okay. So like uh, already I have uh, always given this example, uh, suppose uh, the sports person, those who are wearing some uh, jersey, in the back side of that jersey, they are writing some number. Suppose Sachin Tendulkar number is 10 in his uh, jersey while he is going to back uh, uh, the cricket field, that number is 10. That doesn't mean he uh, is the 10th batsman. Okay. So 10 he has chosen as the lucky number, so that's why he is using that 10. That means he is categorizing himself as 10 number. Okay. So that's it. that assignment of number is nominal scale. And that is not in ordinal scale because he is not the 10th order batsman, but he is not the 10th player in the entire team. Okay. So that says sometimes the number whatever you are assigning, first you should be sure whether that is only for identification purpose, for categorization purpose, or it has some value in ordering. If it has some value in ordering or preference level, then that is ordinal scale. If it has no value in ordering or sequencing, that is simply the number, then that is definitely one uh, nominal scale of measurement. Okay. The next one is your interval scale. This nominal and ordinal scale combined with as your non-metric scale. Now come to the metric scale of measurement that is called the interval scale. In interval scale, uh, definitely uh, the order of the numbers should be in a continuum form. Okay. That means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this way, you have to assign the number. Or uh, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. In, the, in that order also, you have to assign the number. And the best example is suppose the wall clock. The wall clock starts from uh, 1, then ends at 12. Okay. So it has one ascending order, one particular order of arrangement of numbers. So that's why it is called as a one continuum. Or even thermometer, that is also one continuum. Okay. But why it is called as an interval scale? It is called as an interval scale because the gap between two consecutive numbers in this type of scale is always equal. The gap between 1 and 2 in wall clock is 1 hour, that is also equal to the gap between 2 and 3, that is also 1 hour, that is also equal to 3 and 4, that is also 1 hour, and it will continue up to 11 to 12 and 12 to 1. Okay. So that say if the gap between two consecutive numbers in a particular continuum is equal, it is maintained in a, uh, in a constant uh, approach, then definitely that type of scale is called the interval scale. Okay. But, uh, Suppose in the previous example, when I asked, uh, give your rank score for following 10 brands, there is no guarantee the preference gap between rank 1 product and rank 2 product is equal to the preference gap between rank 2 product and rank 3 product. Suppose the gap between rank 2 and 3 may be a little bit lesser in comparison to the gap between rank 1 product and rank 2 product. So that said, it is not necessarily the gap between two consecutive numbers will be equal in ordinal scale. But if the gap between two consecutive numbers will be equal, that is called the interval scale of measurement. And in our social science, generally we are using Likert scale in our survey instrument, 5 point Likert scale or 7 point Likert scale or 9 point Likert scale. And that Likert scale starts from 1 to 7 or 1 to 5 like this. So the gap between 1 to 2 is equal to the 2 and 3 is equal to the 3 and 4 is equal to the 4 and 5. Okay. So that's a suppose 5 stands for highly satisfied, 1 stands for highly dissatisfied, and 3 stands for neither satisfied nor dissatisfied, 2 stands for only dissatisfied, and 4 stands for only satisfied. So the gap between the attitude of the gap between the two numbers is equal so far the attitude or the preference level of the uh, respondents concerned. Okay. So that say here uh, sometimes, sometimes interval scale can also be treated as ordinal scale because it is also in a particular order although the gap is same it is also available in a particular order but why it is being treated as interval scale if the number of uh, uh, your uh, numbers the points suppose seven point Likert scale is more continuous in comparison to five point Likert scale nine point Likert scale is more continuous in terms in comparison to five point Likert scale so that's say if the interval scale will be more continuous, that means it will cover maximum attitude options, then that will be treated as the interval scale. Okay. 
if it will contain uh, some less number of items, less number of options to put tick mark, then somehow it can be treated as an ordinary scale. But in our case, in social science research, although you are using hyper Likert scale, we are also treating it as, uh, it as uh, continuous uh, scale and uh, interval scale. Okay. So that's a here. <coughs> but uh, there is a problem in interval scale. Suppose, uh, come back to the same example of wall clock. In our uh, home, we are using the clock in 12 hour format. But in railway, they are using 24 hour format. Okay. So our interval scale is uh, 12 point uh, Likert scale type. But their interval scale is 24 point Likert scale type. Okay. But the purpose is same, objective is same, both are measuring time, same time, both are measuring same attribute of same object. If same attribute of same object are being measured, then what there are two different formats of the scale. It will be con confusion for the researchers. Okay. Again, suppose you are going to measure the temperature of one object. Temperature can be measured by centigrade scale or by Kelvin scale. But temperature is not being increased or decreased. Temperature as it is, whatever it is there. Okay. For same attribute of same object, you are measuring by different approach by using different versions of Likert scale. Okay, so that said, interval scale has why this type of problem being happen because all this type of uh, Likert scale or interval scale have no fixed point to start. Okay, suppose uh, in 12 hour format, the fixed point, the uh, starting fixed point is 1 and ending point is 12. In uh, 12 hour, 24 hour point, the starting fixed point is 1 and ending point is 24. Okay, in centigrade scale, starting point uh, is positive, in Kelvin scale, starting point is negative. Okay, so that say here, if the starting point is not fixed, that is varying from person to person, point uh, contest to contest, then it will be quite confused to accurately, to measure accurately and uh, draw some conclusion. Okay, so in order to avoid uh, that type of problem, the new type of scale, uh, new type of approach uh, emerged, that is for the ratio scale. Okay, so ratio scale uh, is the super set of all other type of levels of measurement scale. Okay. And the ratio scale uh, starting point is fixed at zero. In case of ratio scale, the starting point is fixed at zero. Suppose, for example, uh, if I will ask to the respondent, how old are you? Suppose uh, he is a regular student and uh, his administer, uh, admission register tells uh, he is 21, uh, 20 years old. And when I will ask to the same student, how old are you? He may not answer, I am 20 years old. He may answer, I am 30 years old. If you will answer, I am 40 years old, then uh, uh, people, people may laugh at him that uh, he is looking like 20 years old, his admission register says uh, he is 20 years old today. But what for he is saying he is 40 years old? He may tell, sir, I am right because I have counted my age starting from 20. If starting point is 20, so obviously he is 40 years old. But generally, whenever we are saying our age or our income or our height, we are not saying by deviating starting from, from point from zero. We are starting point, our, uh, our starting point should be zero. Whenever we are celebrating the first birthday of our kids, we are uh, lighting the one, lighting one candle, then definitely after completion of one year, we are giving number one year. Then after completion of another one year, we are giving two numbers. That means we started counting his age from zero, from zero to one, then from one to two, then from two to three. So we have not counted his age from minus uh, two or from 20 or from 15. Same thing can happen for height, for income, all these things. So that says most of the attributes, most of the attributes of uh, object can be measured by ratio scale by fixing the starting point at zero. Okay. So that says that is called the ratio scale. So in this say these are the four uh, primary levels of measurement scale and uh, while you are uh, designing the survey instrument uh, and in uh, social science the survey instrument is nothing but the questionnaire, whenever you are designing the questionnaire, in few sections of the questionnaire uh, you have to use some Likert scale format, in other section of questionnaire you have to use the ordinal scale format by ranking score option, by giving ranking score, score option. In another section of the questionnaire you have to give some nominal scale format of question. 
and uh, in another section you may ask some question which will be in ratio scale format so four different types of format depending upon our requirement we are using in our survey instrument okay and uh, data analysis tools and techniques are also designed based upon what type of measurement scale you have used whether the variable is measured by nominal scale if it is measured by nominal scale then this type of tool should be used if it is measured by ordinal scale or interval scale or ratio scale then depending upon the kind of measurement scale you have used for collection of data or for measurement of your variable then different type of data analysis tools should be chosen okay now uh, this is just uh, the overall idea about your survey instrument but how to test the reliability and validity of the survey instrument all of you might be knowing there is a term uh, called the convex alpha convex alpha score is the uh, technical way of uh, measuring the reliability of your uh, data which uh, you have collected out of your uh, questionnaire survey in pilot survey okay suppose you have collected uh, data suppose your target sample size is 200 but for pre testing purpose of your questionnaire to test the reliability you have collected data on trial basis in pilot survey 40 respondents data 50 respondents data then i uh, have to run convex alpha and uh, if the convex alpha score is minimum 80% sometimes we are also considering 70% is the standard but most of the cases nowadays it is being improved from 70% to 80% if the reliability score convex alpha score is minimum 80% or 0.8 0.8 means 80% then you can conclude that yes uh, our uh, questionnaire items or the research items what for uh, we have collected the data on the basis of that uh, items we have collected data so definitely our questionnaire is highly reliable but till no till now we are we are not sure whether it is are valid or not only reliable okay but what is the logic behind this from the self just uh, 15 days before uh, uh, i had attended one uh, uh, phd viva final phd viva and uh, the external examiner had asked what is the logic of this convex alpha score most of the people they don't know the logic of convex alpha score only they are uh, they have the knowledge if it is more than 80% it is acceptable otherwise it is rejected okay but what is the inherent logic behind this convex alpha convex alpha is a formula derived by convex the great statistician based upon the concept of split half technology split half technology and based upon your core rules simple example i may give suppose uh, uh, you take one book and that book contains 100 number of pages then that 100 number of pages you make it two equal halves in the left hand side of the book 50 number of pages in the right hand side of the book another 50 number of pages okay then all the 50 number of pages in left hand side may contain some data then all the pages of 50 pages in right hand side may contain the data then run the correlation between these two halves first 50 pages data and second 50 pages data around the correlation and you will get some correlation coefficient value so that you note down in another uh, rough rough uh, what uh, rough book. then what you will do one data you delete from first half of the uh, book and add to the second half and another uh, page from second half you delete from second half and add to the first half that means number should be maintained 50 50 only you have to reshuffle in different iteration okay just like in playing cards you are shuffling and you are distributing so in that in in the same sense suppose you will reshuffle one by one in different iteration again around the correlation then suppose in 50 times it will reshuffle then 50 scores of correlation you will get then find out the average correlation of this 50 correlation 50 individual correlation coefficient that average correlation value is called the convex alpha score that means convex alpha score formula is on the basis of the logic of correlation value of all the uh, research item score in different iteration and if the correlation value inter correlation value intra correlation value is around 80% that means all the scores are almost same if all the scores are almost same then definitely higher level of correlation you will get so if all the scores are almost same that means consistency exists internal internal consistency exists so that say in that case generally most of the researcher they have recommended if that internal consistency correlation value will be minimum 70% and now there it is 80% then only you can accept your research items are highly correlated in terms of response correlation 
So that say internal consistency exists in between uh, in the uh, research items. So that say it is reliable. Okay. Another uh, term called is your uh, composite reliability. Composite reliability means suppose uh, one uh, latent variable contains uh, ten number of research items. Okay, or one construct contains ten number of research items. Then you run factor analysis. You might be doing uh, factor analysis is just uh, uh, for multivariate uh, analysis purpose to compress the similar kind of uh, variables to create one group variable and that group variable is the master variable or construct or component or factor. Okay, so that group variable or factor variable is called the latent variable. Okay, and accordingly you have to give the name based upon the similarity of the response. Okay, the similarity of the individual member variables. So that's a whenever we are applying factor analysis, then definitely each of the research item is having some factor loading to the extracted dimension to the extracted factor. Okay. Suppose, for example, uh, I am uh, giving some uh, uh, items like your uh, blackboard, chalk, page, LCD projector, marker, whiteboard, SC, then a uh, book, chalk. Duster. If all these things I will ask to you, then suddenly the respondents may visualize. Suddenly the respondents may visualize. Probably Sar is talking about a classroom. How they suddenly visualize the I am talking about a classroom because whenever they will correlate all the individual items, they will combine all the individual items. They are giving one direction towards one dimension that is classroom dimension but i never use the word classroom in my questionnaire i use the word only chalk duster blackboard lc projector the individual items only. since there exists some logical similarity among all these items so suddenly the dimension can be automatically extracted in our mindset that is classroom and that is the beauty of factor analysis because this is the common example i gave that say all of you might Extra, uh, you may extract the concept of classroom. But in our survey instrument, whenever you are making study of perception of customer or attitude of the employees, all these things. So that say we don't have any idea whether these type of items are similar to each other or that type of items are similar to each other. So based upon the perception of customer, based upon the attitude of the employees, which items are similar, that is their lookout. Let, let them ask, let me ask the question let them give the response then run factor analysis then all the score which are similar type of uh, variables that will be combined together to create one factor through exploratory factor analysis we have explored that factor then only we can conclude that yes this factor is the uh, real factor on the basis of a logical factor on the basis of customer's perception or employee's attitude but whenever you are extracting a factor, then definitely each of the item has some linkage with that factor, has some relations with that factor. Chalk has some linkage with the classroom. Cluster has some linkage with the classroom. LCD projector has some linkage with the classroom. If it is not linked with the classroom, then that is that is the odd member of that group. That should be deleted. That should not be considered under that factor. Okay. So that's say here. How far chalk is related to classroom? For me, chalk is related to classroom, suppose 90%. Since I'm uh, not using uh, LCD projector, I'm not using PowerPoint slide. For me, LCD availability of LCD projector, uh, similarity of between LCD projector availability with the classroom may be 20%. For other person, it may be 90%. So in this way, the similarity is called in the form of 20%, 90%, 70%, 50%, all this, these are the similarity, these are the correlation between the factor extracted and the respective items. And there is a name, particular name for this, that is called factor loading. And the symbol of factor loading is lambda. Lambda just like in physics you are measuring wavelength, okay. Or just it looks like somehow the symbol of chi square okay so this is a, it is not chi square symbol exactly but lambda is looks like in that way okay so lambda is called as a factor loadings lambda represents the factor loadings or similarity between individual research items with the constant factor okay now one item will be a valid item under that factor 
if the lambda score is minimum 50 percent that means at least 50 percent uh, factor loading should be there uh, between this uh, research item and the extracted construct then suppose one construct is having 10 items you take the you take the uh, squared value of all the individual factor loadings and add all the squared value of individual factor loadings then divide with the divide with the measurement error added with the squared value of factor loadings then that is another formula to be used for validity test okay and uh, that is called the average variance extracted a v e a v e is nothing but it is a ratio and in that ratio the numerator tells about the squared value sum total of squared value of factor loadings divided by the same term whatever you have used in numerator added with the squared value of error variance measurement area variance and if a v e average variance extracted will be minimum 50 percent then only you can say yes these items are valid items okay and uh, this is the trick of for testing the constant validity of a procedure that means if you are thinking that uh, you have asked some research items under one construct hypothetical construct and whether the questionnaire items are really the valid items under that construct or not in order to test that construct validity you have to run cfa confirmatory factor analysis cfa okay and that confirmatory factor analysis can be run uh, through ammo software package okay <clears throat> And by using that software package, you run the confirmatory factor and so automatically it will give the outcome of average variance structure. Okay. And another type of validity is called the discriminant validity. Discriminant validity is just opposite form of the construct validity. Construct validity tells about how far the research items are similar to each other to give one dimension. But discriminant validity tells about how far two, uh, two constructs, not uh, two items, two separate constructs are completely different from each other okay suppose in academics classroom is one of the construct in academics placement is also another construct in academics course fee is another construct then under each construct separate separate variables under classroom chart duster all these things under placement suppose mock interview group discussion written test these are the items under course fee, suppose uh, your tuition fee, development fee, uh, library fee, all these things. So each of the construct may carry different different items. So individual construct we have tested based upon average variance extracted, we have tested the construct validity. So construct wise, these three constructs are valid constructs. And uh, item wise, these are the valid items under each construct. But whether these three constructs are totally different from each other or not? If there is overlapping between two constructs, then definitely there should not be a separate treatment for two constructs. Rather, you have to merge these two constructs to one. So, appropriate amount of discriminative validity must exist. Okay, and how how will test uh, the uh, discriminative validity? That means you have to uh, if you run the software, uh, you will get another uh, value that is called a multiple correlation. Okay, that means. If the multiple correlation among these separate constructs will be lower than the individual variance explained, okay, then definitely that means if variance average variance extracted is higher than the multiple correlation among the construct, then you can conclude yes, there exists some discriminant validity. Okay. So not only you have to test the validity construct wise, but also you have to test the discriminant validity also. That means construct to construct sufficient difference must be there, and within one construct, sufficient similarity must be there. That means intra correlation must be higher, but inter correlation must be lower. Okay, so that says that is uh, one type of validity test you have to make. Another type of validity test you have to make called as your uh, what is that uh, content validity or case validity. Okay, content validity there is no statistics. In case of content validity, by applying your own judgment, by applying your own intuition, or by showing your questionnaire to experts take the suggestion of experts for modification purpose you have to modify the questionnaire because your content of the questionnaire is mismatching with the objective of your research if it will mismatch with the achievement of objective of your research then content wise your questionnaire is wrong okay so that say here questionnaire content should be validated by taking the opinion of experts by taking the opinion of uh, 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 all of other uh, guide, guides 
those who are expert and those who are having expertise in that field of research or by of your own uh, you can test uh, the uh, content validity by implementing that questionnaire or by administering that questionnaire in a small tutorial group in small student group and take the suggestion of that tutorial group or student group and implement that suggestion to improve the content validity okay so this is uh, all about your uh, uh, instrument uh, design and how to evaluate the instruments uh, so far as your reliability and validity concern now let's have a break of 5 minutes and uh, ask some yes, question sir. yes sir sir we will have a break for 5 minutes um, uh, within that uh, there are few questions from the participants so yeah. after that again we will start sir okay uh, sir the first question asked by uh, firoz ali sir how many participants are subject will be good for the reliability and validity of data how many participants should be considered uh, for testing reliability and validity of data yes sir generally uh, it should be minimum uh, 15% of the target sample size 15 to 20% sir okay sir so, suppose your target sample size just a minute uh, one minute sir 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 actually in online uh, meeting or online uh, fdp there will be no digital t <laughs> so <laughs> thank you so much sir you are yeah. talking non stoply that's why uh, i interfere and take the break for 5 minutes yes sir this is uh, my style of teaching sir because i never use this slide because uh, if you i will use slide people will be attentive or constant uh, concentration will be only on slide sir 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 okay. So it's a beautiful deliberation, yeah, sir. You are yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, relating to the uh, real life examples. Yeah. That's the beauty, sir. Okay, so the question was related to what should be the number of participants uh, in pilot survey for sir. testing reliability and validity. So generally, few of the articles I have gone through, most of the researchers they are recommending it should be 15 to 20 percent of total target sample size. Suppose your target sample size is 20 or 200, so it should be minimum 40. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, another question asked by uh, Dr. Kethna from Manipur. Yeah. Sir, yeah. which validity test should be used for studying the employee satisfaction towards career development program? Which test? Again, repeat. Uh, which validity test should be used for studying yeah. employee satisfaction towards yeah. career development program? See, whatever may be the topic, it may be employee satisfaction, it may be job satisfaction. it may be psychological contract it may be high performing work system whatever may be the topic validity reliability test uh, being done of questionnaire based upon the research item number of research item you have used and what type of scale you have used measurement scale you have used and for employee satisfaction obviously you have to use interval scale of likert scale of different dimensions so this uh, validity and reliability test whatever i have discussed same thing can be applied for this also you can also apply chromberg alpha for uh, reliability and uh, this uh, factor loading approach or average variance extracted and discriminant validity trick trick to amos uh, for the validity test also okay sir thank you sir another question from uh, mamta sharma uh, in order to check the validity is it required to go through all the validity test or we can go for some some of these only no one uh, validity test uh, you have to do Uh, related to qualitative research like your uh, content validity or face validity and uh, through data filtration work also almost you have validated but after that also you have to validate the questionnaire by content validity content validity is must you have to check the uh, question uh, by showing the questionnaire to experts or uh, by taking suggestion of experts 
or by taking uh, some recommendation of the uh, original scale developers because you have not developed the scale if you have not the developed scale you have borrowed some scale item from the pre tested questionnaire already tested questionnaire so that's say you have to ask through email to that original developer of that scale that uh, i have modified your instrument after taking your permission so whether it is it will be valid to add this in my contest or not so take their suggestion to achieve the content validity that is must and another uh, uh, quantitative way of uh, validity test like any type of ab approach or on composite reliability approach or conversal approach for reliability and discriminant validity that has to be uh, supported that should to be augmented both are required okay sir sir another question asked from uh, gayatri pari she just called from barampur university in principal component of pca whether it is okay to check the validity after the final introduction derived or it should be always in the beginning valid test uh, should be always in the beginning because you are testing the reliability and validity to uh, conclude whether your survey instrument is approachable or not so after uh, collection of original data again validity and reliability test there is no requirement validity and reliability test always are being done for measurement scale purpose before implementing or before full fledged administer administering your questionnaire after because i i i, I agree most of the scholar they are doing at the first they are collecting their four uh, hundred data then they are running uh, validity test reliability data reliability test for entire four hundred that is not uh, appropriate way of uh, test of validity and reliability you test the validity and reliability in pilot survey data not for entire original data because if your questionnaire will be invalid then original data there is no meaning because most of the data will be erratic so validity level test should be done in pilot survey not after full place administration of questionnaire okay sir uh, sir somesh mahanti asked uh, sir as you are discussing tools and devices can research have qualitative or quantitative approach or both if you explain with example which one or both we should take up for overall success this is the year uh, 2020 samesh ji madam this is the, probably you are the student pg student pg student sir yeah so this is the age of 2020 so both is definitely mandatory only quantitative research or only qualitative research are not sufficient it should be mixed approach yesterday i have already told the research design should be mixed uh, research design it should be both quantitative as well as qualitative suppose first you have adopted quantitative analysis uh, approach for drawing some conclusion but that should be logical in the uh, theoretical point of view in expert's opinion point of view so if that is not logical statistics uh, is just uh, uh, one uh, type of quantitative technique and statistics are always uh, uh, approximate uh, way of achieving the result it is not the exact way of achieving the result it is always the model is always the approximate model in exact model it is not exact model so that's a whenever we are applying some quantitative techniques error will be there so whether that error is within our accepted zone or not that has to be verified by collecting some logical view or opinion or by adopting some grounded theory approach by asking some experts or by making some focus group interview so it should be both both qualitative as well as quantitative if you are First, suppose you have done quantitative qualitative research, then in order to support the views of experts, you collect some data and apply some statistics. First, if you have applied some data analysis, statistical analysis, then the conclusion whatever you have drawn, it should be supported by expert opinion. So both should be there. Thank you, sir. Sir, another question asked by Sri Vidya Ma'am: uh, Should we run a pilot uh, test to know the reliability and validity of the questionnaire prepared by us? of course the same thing i am repeating continuously you have to conduct pilot survey for reliability and validity pilot survey you are making not for any other purpose you are making pilot survey only for validity and reliability uh, analysis for your questionnaire that's all sir questionnaire or for your database sir thank you sir sir uh, one question asked by tusha sir what precautions must be taken while using a psychometric or sociometric scales or tools without violating the uh, patent for it what techniques what precautions must be taken using psychometric or sociometric scales or tools 
see some of type of uh, ethical code of conduct you have to maintain definitely because uh, uh, you have to take permission whenever whatever psychometric or sociometric scale you are using you have to take permission for using that instrument first of all and uh, you have to also take permission of the industry if you are making uh, any uh, survey among the employees of one industries so that that is the first uh, part without taking permission without any uh, all the, because it is a copyright uh, instrument so definitely have to take permission official permission through email they are also giving permission and uh, second precautionary measure you have to take while you are conducting survey they definitely you try to keep the mind how the respondents will not be irritated how the respondents should be in uh, original jolly mood because if the respondents are in hurry mood or respondents are in irritating mood or respondents are having some work and uh, just uh, in between that you met him and uh, within 10 minutes you are asking to fill up the question there so that is not the way of data collection give some time maybe data collection duration will be from, from 6 months to 7 months but at least valid data will come so if within one month you will collect data just like in google chrome every day uh, five to six uh, mails are coming to my email uh, in Google Cloud survey. But I am not going through any questionnaire. I am not filling because I have no time. Because with less time, people are requesting by making telephone calls. Sir, uh, how much time will take? Hardly five minutes. I, I, I am saying why five minutes? I have to go through the questionnaire. I have to internalize. Minimum one day I have to take to fill up a questionnaire. Yeah. So if within five minutes I have to give the data, but there, there is no meaning of doing this as well. That's it. That type of precautionary measure is more important than any other precautionary statistical measure. First of all, give more importance to the mindset of the respondents. If the mindset of respondents is uh, acceptable, then uh, it is the perfect time for collection of data. Thank you, sir. sir. Another question asked by Tusa, sir. Can patent be developed for scales in social science research? Uh, suggest measures to create patent in scale development. Patent in social science is very rare. Suppose in scale, whatever scale you have developed, uh, getting patent in social science is very difficult. But uh, patent for one physical instrument or physical product or physical composition or physical formula, uh, uh, your uh, mathematical formula, that will be easier and that is applicable for only uh, natural science uh, subject or uh, pure science subject. But yes, uh, some scale may be, uh, you cannot tell it is patented rather you can get copyright you can get copyright for your scale whatever you have developed and uh, the scale which you have developed if it is acceptable uh, uh, in generalized manner and uh, if it carries uh, appropriate score of reliability and validity and uh, if it is working perfectly in different context in different situation in different industry then you can uh, file for copyright but patent is very difficult to get in that case thank you sir Sir, uh, Priya Choudhury ma'am asked, in case of educational institution, which instrument should be used? Educational institution? In, sir, I could not get, I could not get the question. Again, you repeat. Uh, in case of educational institution, which instrument should be used? That means uh, his theme of research is educational institution. Sir, I think. Uh, if your theme is uh, in relation to educational institution, that is the service industry. Okay. So, in case of service industry, the same uh, uh, questionnaire you may use, uh, uh, whatever, uh, suppose you are uh, using circle scale for service quality. So, just you have to change the wordings of different items of circle scale and you can use for uh, educational institution. In uh, Siksa Anusundan uh, deemed to be university, uh, two years back uh, one student uh, was doing, uh, one PhD scholar was doing PhD in this topic or uh, educational institution in engineering institute although i was not his direct guide uh, but indirectly i had uh, given some guidance her name is amrita mahanti if you go to south ganga probably her thesis will be uploaded by this time you can go through the amrita mahanti uh, thesis uh, you can get some idea about this okay sir thank you sir, sir one question asked by somashri mahanti ma'am sir how to identify uh, we are on right track or done a good research survey design. Any features or criteria to conclude experiments like impact of COVID-19 to work from home or going digital or virtual online classes? Like 
See, right now, this problem uh, worldwide, this is the problem, the COVID-19 situation. So definitely, uh, it is quite uh, practical to tell that during this situation, uh, nothing is perfect. Although technologically we are advanced and suppose, for example, right now uh, in online mode, we are teaching. But uh, do you think this is the appropriate mode uh, in comparison to face to face? If I would have uh, given this lecture in face to face, probably more interaction would be there. And the formula, whatever I'm just saying uh, in uh, online mode, that formula I would have been written on the blackboard. So that impact will be more in comparison to this online digital mode. So during this phase, uh, no doubt, uh, you will have some theoretical background, you will have some knowledge, you will have some uh, acquaintance with the different dimensions of your research team, it will go through different type of literature, different type of articles. And uh, uh, taking guidance online uh, is definitely not better than taking guidance physically. Okay. So that's why here, uh, Madam Samashri, uh, I am very sorry to say that uh, uh, I pray Lord Jagannath how there will be an end of this COVID-19 as soon as possible. Thank you, sir. Sir, another question asked by Tusa, sir. Is it wise decision to include a mix of three points and five point scale questions? But then why were, uh, why do we reduce the number of yes or no questions and avoid descriptive questions in construction of questionnaires? See, <clears throat> Mixture of three point Likert scale and uh, five point Likert scale, according to my point of view, it is not allowed. But most of the supervisors the, in law uh, or engineering school, they are also allowing. But in my point of view, it should, it should be avoided. So three point Likert scale has no meaning. Already I have told, more and more point Likert scale if you use, it will be more continuous and it, in real sense, it will be called as an interval scale. Otherwise, three-point Likert scale can never be called as an interval scale, it is rather ordinal scale. And, and if you mix up one ordinal scale of person with five-point Likert scale, that is interval scale of person, then data analysis will be difficult. Okay. If separate treatment you are giving for three-point one treatment, for five-point another treatment, that may be acceptable. But if you combine all these three-point, five-point and common technique, if you apply, that will be right. Okay. So that's in my point of view. Uh, not to include three point in five point. If you are using five point, let it be five point. All the scales are five point. If you are using three point Likert scale, that is not three point Likert scale. You don't use. Rather, you use some nominal scale or ordinal scale version. Some by giving some options, some options. Not in agreement or disagreement type type, but some options, some multiple choice options. So that will be treated separately. Some non-parametric method of hypothesis test may be used for this. Okay. But for my point of view, in this age, uh, most of the techniques uh, of data analysis are multivariate analysis. And most of the multivariate analysis techniques uh, require some continuous type of scale of measurement, that to interval scale and ratio scale. So better to avoid 3 point Likert scale, uh, best, uh, better uh, uh, you use uh, 5 point or 9 point or 7 point Likert scale. In PhD or MPhil square, always I recommend 7 point Likert scale. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, rest of the questions we'll discuss. At the end of the session, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Welcome back. In fact, uh, we are having very less time. Even I have some work also. I have to give some mail to my vice chancellor, sir. Anyway, so so uh, in the past half of my session, uh, we have discussed some. Uh, aspects of measurement scale and questionnaire design and again uh, how to evaluate the measurement scale in terms of reliability and validity. Okay. Now let's discuss some uh, brief idea because it is not possible to discuss all type of things uh, in online mode as well as with less time. Let's discuss, uh, let's have some brief idea about the data analysis. Okay. And uh, whenever in social science research we are talking about data analysis, then Generally, we are making two types of data analysis. Uh, one is your uh, descriptive data analysis, another one is your inferential data analysis. Okay. In descriptive data analysis, what you are doing, only you are describing the existing phenomenon of database. That means what is the pattern of data, what is the central tendency of data by calculating mean, median, mode, whatever, and what is the graphical representation of data by making some pie chart, bar chart, whatever. Okay. 
and the most important thing of descriptive analysis is how far the data are uh, dispersed from its mean value or median value and that uh, dispersion measurement generally uh, we are using standard deviation okay so standard deviation or squared value of standard deviation or variance analysis we are making so that say whether uh, the data pattern are uh, almost of less dispersion or of high dispersion to study that part we are making some descriptive analysis we are not making any conclusion we are not drawing any inference out of this analysis that say it is not inferential data analysis we are not testing any hypothesis in descriptive data analysis only we are making pattern analysis of data because it will make some descriptive data analysis of a database uh, no doubt uh, some of the outliers may be automatically deleted and uh, it will be removed from your final analysis some of the irrelevant variables may be removed so that uh, it will be more uh, appropriate uh, to conclude the conclusion of uh, to represent the reality of your data analysis outcomes okay so that say uh, here in that case in descriptive data analysis no doubt uh, you are making uh, the test like your normality tests and uh, your the skewness and ptosis analysis skewness and ptosis analysis you are making for uh, your spreadness of your data pattern if it if it, if you are making skewness analysis uh, if it is highly skewed then definitely it is not a suitable database for applying some parametric test of hypothesis because the most important condition for applying parametric test of hypothesis the data pattern should be normal distribution type of data pattern okay so that say in normality test if it will fail then definitely you have to think about the alternative techniques of data analysis of uh, hypothesis testing and uh, most of the cases uh, in normality if you are failing then uh, we are revisiting the database and we are deleting and you are start standardizing few of the database then again we are making uh, the non normal data to normal data we are converting then we are applying some uh, final inferential data analysis on of this so in case of normality there so many options are available either by skewness simple by skewness and ptosis you can find out whether the data is normal or not normality might be knowing what is the normal data the database is said to be normal if the mean is equal to median and more equal to more and if uh, it will be bell shaped curve and uh, uh, it is highly symmetric in nature it will draw the histogram out of the database the look of the histogram should be in bell shaped curve okay and uh, it is highly symmetrical it is not more bulky towards left or not more bulky towards right if it is bulky towards one side of the middle most position then that is highly skewed data so you have to avoid that skewness okay skewness should be near to zero and ptosis means is your pickedness of the data if it is highly picked around the uh, mean value or middle most value that means the spreadness is very less okay that means almost uh, same data you have collected so repetition will be more so definitely uh, that is also not allowed so in case of ptosis it should be in between 0 to 3 okay so that say here there are some uh, standard points uh, that means uh, if it is below to this then it is acceptable if it is above to that that is not acceptable so by anal making analysis of skewness and ptosis you can also arrive at the conclusion whether your data is normal or not okay another option is called your uh, wilk sapiro analysis that is also another type of uh, wilk sapiro Uh, is one uh, have given one formula based upon that formula you can also uh, conclude whether the data is normal or not and another is your case uh, analysis uh, conglomerate spin up analysis by applying two type of analysis you can also conclude the whether the data is normal or not or uh, by using the formula of uh, your jarko vera jp test okay so jarko vera test also we sometimes jar jp test are also implemented in case of econometrics okay so that jb test you can also implement uh, to test the normality of the data because in econometrics the first condition of applying any type of uh, pre defined econometric model the uh, normality okay so if the data is not normal then definitely whatever data analysis tool you may use it will give some outcome no doubt but the outcome will be invalid outcome okay it does not represent the real picture so that say all these type of things you have to do in descriptive data analysis to know the data pattern okay so in your thesis if you are doing phd in your thesis or mpl thesis or dissertation report of pg your data analysis chapter should be subdivided into two categories 
first division of data analysis should be three categories in fact first division of data analysis should be descriptive data analysis second subdivision of data analysis should be inferential data analysis where all types of hypothesis tests will be conducted and third division of data analysis should be model building and model modification okay so all the model related work uh, should be done in the last part of our data analysis and in the second part of our data analysis all type of inferences all type of individual hypothesis testing type of thing you have to do and in the first part of your data analysis you have to conduct all type of descriptive data analysis to describe the existing pattern of your data whether it is normal or not normal whether it is highly skewed or less skewed whether it is highly dispersed or less dispersed whether the mean median mode are almost same or not so these are the things to be discussed in case of descriptive analysis with some graphical diagram and some statistical outcomes of descriptive statistics so this is just uh, Uh, the overall idea about the descriptive statistics now come to the inferential uh, statistics in case of inferential statistics in social science uh, mostly uh, we are conducting hypothesis tests and in hypothesis test uh, there are two types of test we are conducting one is your non parametric test of hypothesis and another one is your parametric test of hypothesis in case of your uh, non parametric test of hypothesis Uh, suppose in descriptive statistics you at any cost uh, you never achieve the normality so definitely uh, you have to accept the reality that uh, the figures whatever response you have collected that is not normal that is not normal so if it is not normal then definitely you are not bound to apply a parametric test of hypothesis otherwise it will be erratic the outcome will have uh, invalid uh, interpretation so you have to apply some non parametric mode of hypothesis and non parametric mode of hypothesis different techniques are also there like your in fact chi square test is one type of non parametric test chi square test purpose is to know the uh, existence of association between two categorical variables suppose one category or categorical variable is income having three categories high income group middle income group low income group another categorical variable is suppose employee performance and suppose there are three categories of employee performance you have collected high performer medium performer and low performer my hypothesis tells that uh, there is a strong association between uh, income uh, categories and performance categories so in order to test this type of hypothesis because this type of hypothesis are uh, being run between two categorical variables okay categorical variable means uh, both uh, all the both of the variables are measured by nominal scale One, two, three. One stands for high, two stands for medium, three stands for low. So in that case, uh, if you have achieved the score, non-normal score, you have collected, then obviously it is the perfect uh, uh, time to apply, perfect situation to apply chi-square test. Okay, and chi-square test, if you apply, it can uh, give the idea whether these two are highly associated, significantly associated, or uh, insignificantly associated. If it is not uh, significantly associated. Then definitely for uh, performance changes, income is not the factor. Maybe some another factor is there. So another factor you may run and uh, uh, see whether that factor is important or not. Okay. And uh, non-parametric tests like your Tussauds test or your Mann-Wood-Neu test, or again another is your Ron test for to test the randomness. Okay. Or Sine test to test the uh, difference between uh, two uh, factors within a pair. so this type of uh, availability of this type of test are also uh, implemented you can depending because if your purpose is to test significant uh, difference exists between uh, two things within one pair or not or uh, between uh, three uh, items within one group or not so if that type of uh, objective you have set then only you have to choose appropriate uh, technique of uh, non parametric test to test the hypothesis but uh, if you found that your data is normal so definitely uh, in because in the first sub section you have conducted the normality test in descriptive analysis and uh, in second section you are conducting the uh, hypothesis testing approach if in first sub section you have found that your data is normal so definitely you have to apply some parametric test of hypothesis and in parametric test of hypothesis all of us as you know t test uh, f test uh, anova type of thing and uh, correlation regression type of thing this type of uh, analysis you can run to test the 
hypothesis in parametric way. Okay, because uh, correlation regression regression analysis uh, is back with the assumption that all the data are normal. Okay, so what is the difference between correlation and regression, and where to use uh, these uh, two things, correlation and regression? Correlation gives you the degree of relationship between two variables. If it is two variables, that is the case called as a bivariate correlation. If it is more than two variables, that is the case of multiple correlation. Okay. So whatever may be, whether it is bivariate or multiple, but what is correlation? Correlation is the uh, trick of analysis to get the outcome, the degree of relationship between two variables or more than two variables. What is the extent of relationship? Suppose, for example, what is the relationship uh, between me and uh, uh, the coordinator of ASBM FDP? Okay. So that's a what is the degree of relationship. So all other participants looking at our interaction, all other participants might be assuming uh, probably the degree of relationship between uh, resource person and coordinator may be 60% or 70%. Okay. But if it will continue, then after one month, uh, people may uh, assume, no, no, the correlation is not 60%, it may be 90%. After one year, people may guess Okay, it may be 90%, but what kind of relationship they have? Okay, so that's a regression speaks about the nature of relationship. Correlation gives you strength of relationship or degree of relationship, but regression tells about the nature of relationship. Although there exists a relationship up to 90% between two variables, but if one variable will move in this direction, how other variable will move? It will move in the same direction or in opposite direction, or in parabolic way, or in hyperbolic way, or in exponential way, or in logarithmic way. Okay, so the nature of relationship can be captured by one mathematical equation uh, because different forms of mathematical equations are there, or different forms of mathematical models are also there, like your quadratic equation, then um, the exponential equation, logarithmic equations. So you have to fit the variation of these two variables that are in those models, some recommended models, and run regression. If the outcome of regression is best fitted outcome, significant, then that model is the best fitted model to represent the nature of relationship between two variables. So that's a here, whenever you are applying correlation and regression, one of the objectives you are fulfilling, you are making impact analysis. That means what is the impact of one independent variable upon one dependent variable. Remember yesterday we have discussed cause variable and effect variable. So whether this effect is the original impact of this variable or another variables. So in order to confirm that uh, hypothesis, in order to test that hypothesis, you have to run the regression analysis. And if the regression analysis outcome will be significant out of this correlation regression, then only you can go ahead for further analysis of multivariate analysis. But the uh, thing is that, uh, uh, what is the importance of ANOVA then, analysis of variance? ANOVA also conducts impact analysis, but how it is different from regression? Regression is also doing impact analysis, ANOVA is also, analysis variance also doing impact analysis. But uh, how far these, how these two tricks are different from each other? In case of ANOVA, you are studying the impact of one categorical variable upon another non-categorical variable. That means the dependent variable is measured by interval scale or ratio scale. But the independent variable is measured by nominal scale or ordinal scale. Either, and this thing can also be tested by regression, but ANOVA scope is up to this. If you are going to apply ANOVA, then independent variable has to be measured by nominal scale or interval, eh, sorry, ordinal scale. And uh, dependent variable has to be measured by interval scale or ratio scale. Suppose, for example, I want to know the impact of gender on performance or impact of income on performance. But performance score I have measured by Likert scale. Okay. But uh, gender I have uh, measured by nominal scale, male or female. Or income I have measured by nominal scale, high yield income group, middle income group, lower income group. So if I want to confirm, uh, uh, I want to test my hypothesis, suppose my hypothesis tells, uh, there is an uh, insignificant effect of income upon performance. That is my hypothesis. And this, uh, this hypothesis has to be tested. And this hypothesis has to be tested by ANOVA. And uh, why I have tested by ANOVA? Because I have in descriptive analysis already have verified the performance score uh, behaves in a normal way. 
so normality exists so that's say anova is the best fitted uh, recommended uh, technique for testing this hypothesis so that's say i run uh, the anova uh, i will run the anova and uh, based upon the outcome of anova i found the a ratio value of anova is found to be significant and p level is below 5% or 1% so that's say p level is below 1% or 5% definitely i will conclude that yes the impact is significant okay so that say in this way uh, you have to choose the technique based upon the context of your study and based upon the uh, research question you have addressed based upon the objective you have set and based upon the data pattern and based upon the requirement of your analysis okay unnecessarily don't apply any other technique if that is not required for your analysis okay then uh, for model building purpose or uh, uh, mostly for model building purpose you are conducting some uh, multivariate analysis first first you have to conduct some multiple regression analysis or uh, cluster analysis factor analysis conjoint analysis multi dimensional scaling analysis so these are the uh, some data analysis tools coming under your multivariate analysis okay suppose uh, i want to study the impact of uh, classroom and uh, placement upon student satisfaction impact of classroom and placement upon student satisfaction classroom is a latent variable suppose because directly i have not asked any question about classroom and uh, placement also directly i have not asked any question to the student about placement okay and student satisfaction also directly i have not measured any student satisfaction indirectly i have asked some question indirectly means i have asked 10 questions related to classroom i have asked another 10 question related to placement and i have asked another 15 question related to satisfaction of students so that say these three variables are have become now latent variable or construct or factor so whether these three factors are valid factor based upon my asked questions or not that i have to conduct some validity test through confirmatory factor analysis as i have told and i have extracted three factors confirmed factor one is your classroom factor another is your placement factor and final factor is your satisfaction factor so individual confirmatory factor analysis i have conducted and i found these three factors are really reasonable and logical factors few items few measurement items may be deleted may be removed so but after filtration i concluded that these three latent variables are valid latent variables now what i have to do i have to run regression to know the impact of classroom as well as your uh, placement upon your student satisfaction so first of all what i have to do i have to run the regression uh, by taking independent variable classroom as the independent variable upon student satisfaction student satisfaction is the dependent variable then another regression i have to run by taking placement as the independent variable or student satisfaction as the independent variable okay or in one time i have to run regression i have to if i have to run multiple regression then at a time two independent variable i may uh, run to know the impact upon student satisfaction that means placement as well as your classroom both of the independent variable i have to run in regression analysis by considering as the independent variables upon the impact of uh, this upon the student satisfaction but if you will use structural equation model that means here if you are not using structural equation model how many uh, how many steps you have followed first you have followed the confirmatory factor analysis to know the validity then individual factor you have extracted that means you conducted factor analysis okay then individual regression you have run to know the one independent variable to another dependent variable then another multiple regression you have run to know the impact of both of the independent variable upon one independent upon one dependent variable that means uh, you have followed around the five to six steps to arrive at the conclusion that two in separate form but in structural equation model that is the beauty of structural equation model simultaneously it will run factor analysis as well as a regression analysis that two in a combined form that means if you will give only original statements whatever you have asked to the students the original member variables or original items 
and if you run the structural equation model automatically it will extract the three latent variable one variable from classroom members another variable from placement members another variable from satisfaction members so automatically it will extract the factors and automatically it will run the regression to know the impact of on student satisfaction so if it happens simultaneously at a time that will be more realistic that will be more representativeness of real life in comparison to the individual step by step analysis separately okay so generally what we are doing first we are doing some individual analysis step by step to remove some of the invalid factors or to remove some of the invalid items under one factor okay or to remove some invalid linkage in regression then in individual analysis whenever we will identify we will be able to identify that these data are not required data these are the invalid data or invalid variable you have to remove or these are uh, uh, items are invalid items you have to remove so after removal of all the uh, uh, invalid variables or invalid items or invalid linkage then whenever you will run the structural equation model with the valid linkage with the valid item or the valid variable then goodness of fit of overall model will be improved okay so without step by step verification if directly will uh, implement the structural equation model approach then definitely you may not achieve the appropriate amount of goodness of fit index in structural equation model okay so while you are building the model or you are thinking to formulate the structural equation model first individual analysis inferential analysis you have to make then you have to combine or uh, you have to filter you have to modify your approach you have to remove some of the variables or some of the linkages then third version of your conceptual model because uh, before modification that was your conceptual model model but after modification the mod conceptual model got modified then the modified version of conceptual model should be run in structural equation model package like amos package then the final model whatever you will get that will be the most valid model that is your own contribution that is your research model because that is the modified version of previous conceptual model and that modified version of model is more uh, rep uh, representative best representative of the reality in comparison to the original conceptual model this approach generally the researchers are applying that means uh, step by step or uh, uh, in every step in every uh, movement uh, only removal of outliers removal of uh, disturbing elements removal of uh, some disturbing linkages will be done then only the final only valid items valid linkages valid equations and valid uh, uh, dependence independence relationship will be considered for final model building so this is uh, just uh, overall idea about your data analysis whatever you have to make now i will uh, invite to have some questions we are having 10 minutes around 10 minutes sir. so let's have some question answer discussion yes sir thank you sir sir uh, uh, ma'am rajni agrawal uh, asked sir please suggest which scale to be used to measure attitude and perception of borrowers and bankers in case of bank loan disbursement attitude perception definitely you have to use uh, your uh, metric scale of measure like either interval scale or ratio scale For attitude and perception measurement, obviously you have to use some metric scale of measurement, continuous scale of measurement. For this, I will use some multiple choice type of question. That analysis will be difficult. So sure. for attitude measurement, uh, it may be employee of bank or employee of any manufacturing concern or whatever. So attitude measurement uh, of customer or employees, whatever attitude and perception, because these are the two psychological attributes. and for measurement of psychological attribute you have to use some continuous scale of measurement not uh, non metric scale of measurement so. okay sir uh, sir uh, somya sri mahanti asked sir can you explain the type of point scales with their use and examples like your five point scale seven point scale nine point scale they probably see is asking so five point less uh, scale means uh, suppose uh, five stands for strongly agree one stands for strongly disagree and three is the neutral point that is neither agree nor disagree and two stands for only disagree and four stands for only agree that means more uh, higher point you are moving more positive uh, favorable response you are collecting 
more lower point you are uh, collecting more uh, unfavorable response you are uh, collecting okay but this favorableness option and unfavorableness option will be more if it will be improved from 5 point to 7 point okay and again it will be spreadness will be again more if it will be 7 point from 7 point to 9 point that means respondents will have more option to give their exact attitude or exact perception in putting tick mark if it is of higher level of point of Likert scale. If it is suppose you compare 5 point Likert scale to 9 point Likert scale, people will feel more comfortable in giving response in 9 point Likert scale because there will be have more options of favorableness or unfavorableness. Okay. So whether it is uh, related to employee satisfaction or customer satisfaction or customer attitude or employee attitude. But to conduct this psychological type or to collect the psychological response related to psychological attribute, as far as possible, you have to give more number of options in Likert scale and more number of options of Likert scale you are giving means more points you are adding. So this is uh, my suggestion that say most of the MPL PhD scholar who are recommending either 7 point Likert scale or in most case, uh, in best case it is uh, 9 point Likert scale. 11 point Likert scale generally the typical research organization they are using. Generally, academic uh, research, uh, we are using maximum either 7 point or 9 point. 5 point only PG students in dissertation or uh, summer project they are using. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. Sir, uh, Mohammed Ahasan, sir, asks if the Cronbach alpha is less than 50, then what is the solution? Less than 50 means uh, no way you have to accept. Uh, if it is less than 80 but above than 70, then it is acceptable. But less than 50 means uh, there is a huge lack in internal consistency. So solution means uh, there is only one solution. You have to revisit the database and uh, you have to remove some of the outliers. After removal of outliers, again you run from the alpha, it may be improved from 50 to 60 percent. Again you revisit and again you remove the outliers. And if after in the removal process, uh, you may tell that almost all the data are being removed out of my total database, then definitely you have to collect more data. Suppose your target sample size is 200 and uh, you have collected 400 data and during your to achieve your converse alpha score above 70% and you have removed around 300 records, only 100 records remain. So again you recollect data another 400 because there is no other option. Sir, uh, one question asked by Priya Choudhury, ma'am. Sir, can you please explain which measurement scale should be used for employer branding in educational institutions? Employer branding for educational institutions? Sir, which scale? Uh, yeah, which scale means definitely uh, your uh, some recommended uh, instruments are also there in people download some of the brand value questionnaires or brand equity questionnaire uh, probably uh, I remember for brand personality there is a uh, popular questionnaire uh, given by Ekar Mayor uh, Ekar scale A E K E R to agree the name and uh, brand personality if you uh, search in Google search so many ready made uh, well defined well accepted brand personality skills are there and brand value brand equity questionnaires are there you revisit the items of those scales, ready-made scales, and you pick up few of the relevant items from uh, those scales and you use in your scale. And before uh, using uh, the data, before applying data analysis, you pre-test your questionnaire, modified questionnaire, uh, make some analysis of validity test. If it is okay, then you go ahead. So which scale you have to use for uh, brand, uh, uh, employer branding, uh, there is no such particular uh, recommended scale. So many, several type of recommended scales are available. It only uh, you have to go through their scale items and in your present context, in your employee setup, in, uh, organizational setup, in your organizational cultural setup, you internalize which item is best fitted for your context. So there is no such uh, formula or rule of thumb that for this, this scale, for that, another scale, so many several, suppose for measurement of service quality, I'm not saying only sub call instrument, so many other instruments are also there. It depends upon, you have to borrow the items from different recommended scale and uh, you check whether these borrowed items are best fitted items in your present context or not. So that sir. is the process. Sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, one question asked by Dr. Pallavi Moon, 
sir is it always required to go for vif to check the multi collinearity while applying multiple regression test obviously obviously because uh, in the uh, space software that option is available while you are running regression and uh, test of multi collinearity is also required uh, because uh, it will capture some of the statistical error you are making because uh, if there is a strong correlation among the independent variables then uh, adjusted r square value will be more and which has no meaning so if the variance explained by the independent variable of or dependent variable uh, is erratic because of uh, existence of high level of multi correlation then there is no meaning to have that type of statistical outcome so better you have to conduct vif uh, to check the multi correlation in regression thank you sir sir one sir, other one question <laughs> sir yes uh how to calculate by mcmc method yeah. to parameter estimation by using given data sir uh, give any idea from where uh, i can uh, actually this from parameter esti estimation or give any other process to uh, give the parameter estimation to idea yeah, about parameter estimation about what parameter estimation of a given data but population data or uh, uh, given data about infection or any other type of data yes yes you are given to vishwas yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah. see this uh, first of all before estimating any parameter out of the given population or given uh, sample whatever first of all you have to be clear uh, whether these parameters are logical parameters or not if that parameters are illogical parameters then definitely uh, estimating that parameter will be erratic and how to study whether these parameters are logical parameters logic uh, whether these parameters are logical or illogical that can be verified with huge literature review only people review the literature what other researchers have taken whether that parameters uh, whatever they have taken and find uh, their findings are giving success in their result or not if they are giving success then that can be that may be one of the logical parameter it may be invalid parameter in your case after testing in your case but before testing that is logical that means in qualitative research in grounded theory approach you have taken those parameters are logical parameters and if you found that these parameters are logical what is the meaning of parameter parameter is any characteristics of population not of sample characteristic of sample is called the statistic but uh, characteristics of population is a parameter so what others have told to characterize the entire population that is your parameter and those names of those parameter can be extracted from your uh, grounded theory approach or from huge literature review or through expert opinion and if you think that sounds very logical in the context of your study then only you can uh, Uh, apply some data you can think about some data analysis tool to estimate those parameter and for parameter estimation so many data analysis tools already have told in case of your uh, parametric test of hypothesis either you can apply uh, t test or anova or regression or correlation or any kind of multivariate analysis techniques for parametric estimation you can also use but before finalizing your technique first of all you have to be sure the background support theoretical support is valid or not if the theoretical support is invalid then those parameters should be avoided out of your own study okay sir thank you so much sir yeah. uh, sir firoz ali sir yeah. asked what is the benchmark for cronbach alpha for individual questions to be accepted or rejected after the pilot study for individual item the uh, cronbach alpha cannot be run it should be minimum 2 to 3 items combinedly because uh, your cronbach alpha formula is based upon correlation and correlation analysis requires minimum two variables okay so that's a converse alpha score cannot be extracted out of individual item it should be a group of item and a group of item means minimum two items okay so that's a converse alpha score uh, should be minimum 80% for a group of items uh thank you sir so uh, sri vidya ma'am again asking uh, please explain little more about standard deviation she wants to know standard deviation standard deviation is purely very common thing yeah. uh if you will go through any fundamental book of statistics uh, by levin rubin 
statistics for management by label lubin very clearly it has mentioned the concept of uh, mean and standard deviation standard deviation is nothing but the amount of uh, dispersion this is the measure of dispersion so how far all the data are deviated from its mean data okay and there is a formula square root of uh, x minus x bar whole square divided by n if it is some population deviation divided by n if it is some population deviation it is small n minus 1 so that say that formula you are using for the concept of standard deviation how far all the real data of individual record or individual respondents are overall deviated from its mean value so average amount of deviation is called as standard deviation from its mean so if the standard deviation will be more then definitely your data are highly uh, dispersed data then definitely internal consistency are less if standard deviation value is more okay, okay sir. so this is the idea about standard deviation okay sir so uh, mamta sharma ma asked uh, sir can you use different scales to measure different construct under one study it would be better to use same type of scale so that the uh, uniformity will be maintained and comparison will be logical if different type of scale if you will use for different type of construct and all the construct will be the part of single model no doubt it is possible i am not saying it is impossible but the uh, comparison will be uh, difficult whenever you are comparing one model with another model and uh, uniformity will not be maintained so it will be better to use same type of scale for one model another type of scale for another model maintenance of uniformity should be maintained okay sir thank you sir sir gayatri padhi ma asked sir whether it is possible to do factor analysis if the data is non normal or it should be converted to normal data and then proceed the theory says uh, for non normal data factor analysis should not be applied because factor analysis is a kind of uh, multivariate technique which is back to the assumption that all the data are normal okay and if you are getting non normal data try to improve try to convert the normal that non normal data to normal data and after getting normal data you run to factor analysis but at any cost if you are not finding any uh, normality of the database then forget about factor analysis think about any other type of non parametric test okay sir thank you sir sir uh, Uh, Sri Vidya Ma'am asks, sir, can you have a sheet to keep it handy with regards to the tools of analysis, parametric or non-parametric test, and the legal significance to accept or reject the hypothesis? The first sentence, what you do? Sir, uh, can you have a sheet to keep it handy with regards to? Means he is asking about parametric, non-parametric, uh, and the legal significance. The ready-made sheet he is asking. See. Uh, Yes, uh, you can uh, download uh, that type of uh, material from Google search. Probably I had uh, one uh, that type of uh, common for formula sheet. Okay, probably I will uh, uh, send to you to your email if I will find that. But uh, no doubt it is available in Google search. Where to apply parametric test? Where to apply non-parametric test? Which test purpose is what? The entire uh, master table is also available in Google search if you search. Okay. And uh, level of significance in social science always five percent. If it will be one percent, that will be better. But level of significance generally by default we are accepting five percent. Sir, yeah. sir, uh, to sir, sir asked, can you suggest some scales to measure risk perception, risk attitudes, and self actualization of investors? For risk perception, risk, uh, risk attitude, and self self actualization. Uh, Uh, in behavioral finance lots of uh, ready made instruments are available lots of instruments are available even i am i am doing research on this topic right now so lots of uh, so instruments are available and most of them are using python like us most of them they are using python like us okay sir thank you sir sir uh, ami paul asked one question what are the chances stratified data produce errors in final result chances of stratified data produce errors in final results stratified data means stratified data means sampling the stratified sampling through stratified sampling method he has collected data so that data what is the chance of error probably is asking so yeah. chance of error does not depend on uh, what type of method of sampling you have used chance of error uh, is due to the 
the kind of response you have collected out of the respondents okay so if you are using some uh, irrelevant uh, sampling method then uh, the respondents are not logical to be the part of your analysis but the error in the data is because of the response they are giving not the respondents what kind of response they are giving depending upon the validity and reliability of response the chance of error will be estimated but if initially it were wrongly choose the respondent that is the initial error beginning error you have made okay at the beginning wrong method of sampling you have chosen that say already i have told in the beginning of today's session whether the respondent can answer your question or not if you have chosen the wrong respondent then that is the defect deglo sampling wrong sampling method okay but so first you choose in the first step the appropriate method of sampling so that the respondent is suitable respondent appropriate respondent but although the respondent is appropriate respondent again there is a chance of getting error in response or in the data itself okay so it is not due to only stratification of sampling it is because of several reasons several sources are there for getting error thank you so much sir sir, sir coming to the last question of today's session uh, taruna dubey ma'am asked Sir, can you suggest scale for measuring farmer empowerment through organic farming? Repeat again. Repeat. Uh, scale measurement for farmer empowerment through organic farming. Yeah, farmer empowerment. Whether it is farmer empowerment or women empowerment or employee empowerment or peasant empowerment, but after all, the uh, master of variable is empowerment. Only respondents are the units of analysis are different. It may be farmer, it may be person. One of my research scholar is going on person empowerment, okay? Or employee empowerment. Even uh, my wife has done PhD in employee empowerment in uh, manufacturing industry. So that say here the major focus is on empowerment, okay? So so many scales are available, ready-made scales are available uh, in empowerment, okay? Uh, and all the scales are all, uh, continuous scale type or interval scale type, all the items. Okay, but generally for farmer empowerment, uh, since most of the farmers are uneducated, they they lack the knowledge about this, whether strongly agree or disagree or whatever, uh, whatever the reason. So physically you have to go to them and uh, physically you have to ask uh, by converting this Likert scale form to. Their approach in Odia language, you have to ask of your own. Then you may uh, apply some different trick to collect uh, the data, and that data you have to convert or you have to reorient to uh, Likert scale form. Because directly you cannot uh, distribute the questionnaire in Likert scale form to farmer because they don't know what is this Likert scale, what is strongly disagree. So informally you ask the question, collect some response, then that response you fit in Likert scale form of your own. Uh, sir, the last one, sir, uh, our participants are asking, uh, can you please suggest some books for SPSS, MOS, and ACM practical learning? Lots of e-books are available. There is no single book. Lots of e-books are available for beginners in SPSS and MOS. And the best book for fundamental of uh, research is your... Uh, uh, Levin Lubin is for only statistics, that is not for research, that is only for statistics for management to have some preliminary idea about statistics. Sure. But uh, NK Malhotra, marketing research by NK Malhotra, that is the uh, best book for multivariate analysis. Sure. And for overall concept of research methodology, I must recommend Donald Cooper. Donald Cooper, business research method by Donald Cooper, that is probably of Tata Maglory publisher. Okay. And uh, sales publisher is probably for uh, NK Malhotra. Or peers and probably, and uh, for SPSS and uh, for uh, most packages, many any ebooks you may download in Google search, which is freely available. Any ebooks, there is no particular author is required. Any ebooks for beginners you may download. You may write uh, in search engine. Uh, you may write SPSS for beginners. Sure. Okay. So automatically sir, options will come. Sir, good afternoon. I have a question. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please. What is the scale you would adopt for the neurofinance area, sir? Neurofinance. You can repeat. Uh, what 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 type of scale would we use in the area of neurofinance? Neurofinance. 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 Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Yeah. 
that means uh, embedment of artificial neural network in behavioral finance n n type of thing n n type of approach or uh, in behavioral finance neural finance means almost it is a specific approach of behavioral finance and in neuro finance uh, i don't recommend uh, to go for data collection by survey method in neuro finance better you have to apply some qualitative research aspect not the quantitative research aspect okay first you collect the data by uh, first you have some uh, idea about uh, neuro finance in qualitative research and discuss with the respondents informally codify that based upon appropriate coding principle and that coded version will be converted to quantitative approach so for neuro finance i should not recommend any type of survey type of questionnaire or whatever you have to be participate in the survey just by focus group interview method or by qualitative uh, approach method or by grounded uh, theory approach method then all the opinion whatever you have collected whatever discussion you have made that you have to codify by uh, by applying some appropriate coding principle then you apply some quantitative research thank you sir thank you so much thank you uh, thank you so much sir uh, yeah. um, for this wonderful deliberation on the instrumental tool to data analysis i hope the entire deliberation will definitely help us participants in their respective research areas and also help them in their future research and on behalf of afm family uh, our sincere gratitude to you sir and definitely we are to hear in, in the future course of time i also like to thank our participants for their uh, patient learning and active participation and cooperation in the question answer session thank you so much sir thank you all the participants thank you all thank you thank you